Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Bob Brocker. I am the uh, founder, uh, president of uh, HYS Colorado. So I welcome you all here today. Uh, we have Damian Rosenberg and uh, Connie Ward who are going to be speaking. I'll introduce them in a few minutes. Uh, first, I'd like to just provide a really brief introduction to what HYS Colorado is. Our goal in life is to be the premier resource hub for aging Coloradans and their families. Whether you are here in this, you're a part of the sandwich generation, you are a current caregiver or maybe a future caregiver. And then we have the folks on the, this side of the sandwich who are possibly looking for information and uh, service providers who can help them with, with their uh, aging requirements. There are nearly 3 million Coloradans who are over the age of 40. And that is that 3 million is our target market for what we're doing with AgeWise. So we are a nonprofit. Uh, we started, uh, launched last summer. So a lot of people are coming to the site, not just to look for service providers, which would be folks who do, who provide these kinds of services. Um, but also to become informed and educated about this whole variety of aging related issues. We also have been conducting webinars at the, we've had 12 so far uh, since uh, August of last year. And uh, those webinars have covered almost every one of these boxes at one point. Um, there's, there are always a lot of questions about Medicare and Medicaid, which is why we're addressing those two topics today. Uh, and we'll be addressing them again, uh, probably this fall. Um, there are uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interest in home modifications and fall prevention. Uh, we've been noticing a lot of people coming to our site to read articles about those two things and to watch, um, a webinar that we conducted uh, about three or four or five weeks ago on home modifications. So if you come to our website, you're going to find a lot of information. Uh, if we have time later, we can we can do a little guided tour, but uh, if we don't, that, that's okay. You can go anytime you want. It's free to use, uh, just to explore. Uh, our, our other panelist is Connie Ward. Uh, Connie is... Um, owner of Optimal Aging Medicare Solutions. She has 10 years of experience in the Medicare insurance arena and is very familiar with all of the rules, regulations, and nuances of uh, Medicare. Today, she'll be talking about eligibility, how and when to enroll, the cost, uh, programs for financial assistance. For example, there's, there could be extra help with Medicare and low-income subsidy and then how it works with Medicaid, and then uh, what is a dual complete Medicare Advantage plan? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Connie Ward. I am the principal of a company called Optimal Aging Medicare Solutions. I am happy to be here today with you. I hope I can answer some questions that you all might have. Um, I get a lot of joy out of teaching people about Medicare because I believe that knowledge is power and you can only help yourself by knowing as much as you possibly can about Medicare. So let's go on to the next slide and just give it a start. Okay, so what is Medicare? Um, you guys have all seen this little red, white, and blue paper card. Medicare is a federal insurance program that is available for US citizens and legal residents. It's partially funded by taxes that you have paid while you're working. And what a lot of people don't know is that you can also qualify if you were married to somebody for 10 years and you weren't working, but they were, you can qualify under their social security taxes. It is individual health insurance. It is not a family health care plan. It's not free. You always have to pay a premium for it unless you qualify for assistance. It is not Social Security and it's not Medicaid. Let's go to the next slide, please. So you're eligible for Medicare either by turning 65 or with a qualifying disability. 
Um, immediate qualification occurs with end-stage renal disease and Lou Gehrig's disease, but there are other disabilities that will qualify you for Medicare after being on Social Security disability income for 24 months. You can see that Medicare is kind of like alphabet soup. We have pieces and parts, and um, a lot of people get them very confused. Part A and Part B are original Medicare. Part A is your hospital benefit. Part B is your medical benefit. And we'll go on to the next slide. As you can see, we just talked about A and B being part of original Medicare. And then um, what we didn't get to cover on the previous slide is that Part C are known as Medicare Advantage plans and Part D is your prescription drug coverage. I'll wait for the next slide to come up. So Medicare Part A is your hospital coverage. It covers your stay in the hospital and it covers inpatient care. I'm not gonna go through every one of these little details that are covered by Part A, but you can see that it can include everything from your operating room, recovery room, blood transfusions, skilled nursing. It also covers hospice part, with Part A. We'll wait to go on to the next slide. One thing that's important to understand with Part A is that it generally comes with a zero premium, as long as you have contributed to Social Security taxes. Part B is your medical insurance. Your premium for Part B will vary by income. Most people this year are paying $170.10 unless they have assistance or unless they have higher income. You can see all of the benefits listed below that are covered by Part B. The most uh, utilized benefits are your outpatient care by specialists and doctors, diagnostics, ambulance, PT, occupational therapy, and mental health care, um, and durable medical equipment are the most common. We'll wait for the next slide to come up. So enrollment timing is really important with Medicare. You want to enroll as soon as you are eligible to avoid penalties that can add an additional 10% to your premium for each 12 month period that you delay. You can qualify to enroll three months prior to your eligibility date for Part B, which is usually at the age of 65. It can also be at the point of your 25th month of short-term disability income. So you would be able to enroll in Medicare three months prior to that birthday month at the earliest, and then on your birthday month, you can apply or three months after. I always encourage people to enroll as soon as possible just to get it out of the way and make sure that you have all your ducks in a row and you avoid any penalties. We'll wait for the next slide to come up. So if you're taking Social Security when you first qualify for Medicare at the age of 65 or with short-term disability income, you're automatically enrolled in Medicare Parts A and Part B. If you're still working, you can enroll online at medicare.gov or by setting an appointment at your local Social Security office. I always encourage people to meet with a licensed insurance broker to compare employer group plans with Medicare coverage. Sometimes Medicare is the best path for you and sometimes it's better to stay on your employer group plan. They're not all created equal and you just wanna make sure you're looking at everything before you make your decision. So when can you enroll in Medicare? We already talked about that initial enrollment period when you first turn 65. Again, you can see on the graphic here, you can enroll three months prior to that 65th birthday or three months after and the month of. Every year, if you miss that initial enrollment period, there's another opportunity to enroll called the general enrollment period. This occurs every year between January 1st and March 31st and gives you a July 1st effective date for your Medicare. You will have face penalties for both Part B and Part D if you didn't have credible coverage during that time frame between enrolling and your 65th birthday. Special enrollment periods do exist for people who continue to work. They actually get eight months after their last day of work to get enrolled in Medicare before they face any penalties. One important thing to know here is that sometimes I've heard where employers will tell their um, retiring beneficiaries that they don't need to enroll in Medicare as long as they keep their COBRA for their group and health, health insurance plan. Unfortunately, COBRA does not count as credible coverage for Medicare and these people many times face penalties once they go beyond that eight month period 
after their last day of work. We'll wait for the next slide. So when can you change your Medicare plan? Medicare has rules for when you can make changes to your Medicare. The most common time is the annual enrollment period. We all know it's here because we see the advertising on TV go up in, in uh, numbers. We get a lot of mail in our mailboxes regarding Medicare and Medicare insurance plans. It occurs every October 15th to December 7th and you get a January 1st effective date. For people who are in Medicare Advantage plans, many of them don't know that they actually get another enrollment period. It's at the first of the year from January 1st to March 31st, and this allows Medicare Advantage members to make one more change to their Medicare plan. And they can change from a Medicare Advantage plan to another type of Medicare Advantage plan or back to original Medicare with a prescription drug plan. There are also special enrollment periods throughout the year. These really kind of uh, go with life-changing events. So retirement gives you a special enrollment period, losing your group insurance plan by choice or by, the, by not by your choice, qualifying for any type of financial assistance with Medicaid, low-income subsidy, uh, gives you a special enrollment period, and being diagnosed with a chronic condition can give you a special enrollment period into a chronic special needs plan. Moving is also another special enrollment period. This one people tend to forget about, and they don't realize that when they move, they only have 60 days after their move to change their Medicare plan. They want to make sure to do that because if they're on a Medicare Advantage plan or a prescription drug plan, they are very specific to the location in which you're living. So once you move after that 60 day period, they will be canceled and you be, might be left without insurance. So we'll wait for the next slide. This might be a good time to ask if there's any questions. Damien, do you see anything in the chat box? I don't. Okay, thank you. So there are late enrollment penalties if you miss your initial enrollment period and you don't have other credible coverage. Credible coverage meaning an employer group plan that's covering you as well as Medicare would cover you for your medical and your prescription Part D drugs. So Medicare Part A does not have a, a penalty as long as you qualify for premium free. Medicare Part B and Medicare Part D both have a 10% penalty for every 12 month period that you do not have coverage. For Medicare Part D, that time period is 63 days that you can go without credible coverage. They don't give uh, any buffer at all for Medicare Part B. So that penalty would start in month one if you do not have credible coverage. So you wanna take advantage of that initial enrollment period as soon as you can. We'll wait for the next slide. So there are options for more coverage. Those of you who are on Medicare or know people who are covered by Medicare, know that Medicare doesn't cover everything. So people will typically add additional coverage for their medical and pharmaceutical needs. So on the left of this screen, you'll see that the first option is a Medicare Advantage, or I'm sorry, a Medicare Supplement Plan combined with a prescription drug plan. You're paying a premium for each one of these plans separately, and you have to see doctors that are accepting original Medicare. On the right-hand side, the other option are Medicare Advantage plans. These are insured by private insurance companies and they combine all of the benefits together on one plan, sometimes at a zero premium. And then you would be able to see doctors that participate in that plan. Some plans have networks, other plans don't have networks. It really depends on the plan that you choose. The biggest difference between these two options is that when you go with option one, a Medicare supplement plan and a combined prescription drug plan, you are paying your premium every month, whether you use it or not. Most of your cost sharing is in advance in terms of that premium. When you go with a Medicare Advantage plan on the right-hand side, your cost sharing occurs in co-pays as you use it, rather than in premium. So the cost sharing is really a significant difference for these two types of coverage. I'll wait for the next plan slide. So Medicare Advantage plans are also known as Medicare Part C. Medicare Part C plans cover your Medicare Part A, 
do benefits, benefits covered by Part B? And then most of them include a prescription drug coverage. It's important to know that by law, these Medicare Advantage plans have to cover everything associated with original Medicare. Now, Medicare Advantage plans give you advantages over Medicare as well with additional benefits that may include vision coverage, dental coverage for preventative dental, cleanings, x-rays, and exams, hearing coverage, and then fitness membership. So they're really kind of known in the industry as full coverage plans. We'll wait for the next slide. There are many types of Medicare Advantage plans. The most common are health maintenance organizations, also known as HMOs. There are preferred provider organizations known as PPOs, point of service plans, and then special need plans. Here in Colorado, the three primary types are going to be the health maintenance organizations or HMOs, preferred provider organizations or PPOs, and then special needs plans for dual special needs and chronic special needs. We also have private fee for service plans and medical savings account plans. So these are not available here in Colorado at this time. It's important to know that there are very big differences between HMOs and PPOs, primarily as far as networks are concerned. If you're on an HMO, you're going to be getting referrals to see specialists, whereas on a PPO, you have the flexibility to see anybody that you need to see without a referral. Special needs plans, I'm gonna to go to, into a little bit more detail when we get further on then into additional slides. So we'll wait for the next slide to advance. So here are some things to know about Medicare Advantage plans. The first thing is you have to be enrolled in Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B and live in the county where the plan is offered. There are no underwriting requirements and you can't be not denied coverage for health or financial status. All in Medicare Advantage plans are insured by private insurance companies like United Healthcare, Humana, Aetna, Cigna, Bright. Um, there's a new one coming out called Devoted. The cost sharing for Medicare Advantage plans comes in, in low to zero monthly premiums and low co-pays for services. Some plans have provider and pharmacy networks. All plans have what they call an out-of-pocket maximum to limit your financial exposure and again, they must cover everything covered by original Medicare. We'll wait for the next slide. So Medicare Part D is the easy one to remember because D is for drugs, right? So Medicare Part D is not included in, a med in original Medicare. You purchase these plans through private insurance companies or they can be embedded in a Medicare Advantage plan. Prescription drug coverage and costs vary by plan. It's very important every year to take a look at your prescription drug coverage to make sure that your plan continues to cover your drugs and that the prices haven't changed. Medicare Part D is not required, but it does carry a 10% penalty per year that you're not covered if you do not have other credible coverage. There are four stages of coverage to budget for, and we'll go into detail on those stages on the next slide, I believe. So Medicare Part D's donut hole, many of us have heard about that, also called the coverage gap. So there are four stages of Medicare's prescription drug coverage, and these stages are the same regardless of whether it's embedded in a Medicare Advantage plan or whether you purchase a standalone prescription drug plan. The first stage is your deductible stage. You may or may not have a deductible that you have to hit before you go into the initial coverage stage. The initial coverage stage is where you pay a copay, depending on the plan that you've enrolled in. It's basically getting a discount on your prescription drugs. Medicare sets a threshold every year of how much money you can spend at a discount for prescription drugs. That threshold is based on the total cost of the drug. And once you go over that threshold, you would then go into what Medicare calls the coverage gap or the donut hole. And this is where the consumer pays about 25% for the total cost of their drugs. There's another threshold that allows you to get out of the coverage gap, and that's by spending a considerable amount of money on your own for prescription drugs. Um, and when you get into the coverage gap, you pay a small percentage of the drug cost. 
Um, it's usually not more than 5% of the total cost, um, depending on whether or not it's brand name or generic. At the end of the year, those stages reset and you start all over in January. So what a lot of people don't understand about the coverage gap is that again, when you, when you go into the coverage gap, it's based on the total cost of your drug. I always like to give a little example in this demonstration here because it is such an, uh, a very confusing concept. Insulins are, are probably most, the most expensive drugs out on the market right now that are most commonly used. Their total costs are about $500. When you pay for them with your prescription drug plan, you might be paying $45 for these drugs. But what happens is that Medicare keeps track of the total cost every time you fill that prescription drug. So you go fill your insulin prescription, you pay 45, they take $600 away from your threshold allowance. This year, that threshold allowance is a little over $4,200. So by the time a person gets to month seven or eight buying insulins at, at $500 in total cost apiece, they will have gotten into the coverage gap. And when you go to the pharmacy, you're realizing, wow, my prescriptions have really gone up in cost. I wonder why. Well, the reason is because you have actually entered into the coverage gap and you're now paying 25% of the cost of those drugs rather than the low copay that you were paying before. Any questions on this particular slide? I always like to ask because it is probably the most confusing part of Medicare. So if there are no questions, we'll, we'll go to the next slide. So the pricing structure for prescription drugs occurs on a tiered basis. The higher the tier, the higher the drug cost. There are typically five tiers in the Medicare prescription drug coverage. The, the first two are gonna be your generics. Tier three and tier four are gonna be brand names with the exception of high risk generics which are, which are billed at tier three, like your insulins and inhalers. Tier five are gonna be specialty drugs like uh, oral chemotherapy. And you can see on the right-hand side that the higher the tier, the higher your cost is gonna be for that prescription drug. We'll go to the next slide. So important things to know about prescription drug coverage. You can per they can be purchased as standalone plans offered by private insurance companies, or they can be embedded in a Medicare Advantage plan. They cover drugs most commonly prescribed for Medicare beneficiaries as determined by national standards. You must be enrolled in Medicare Part A, Part B, or both. They cover specific brand names and generic drugs listed in what's called the drug formulary. A drug formulary is simply the list of drugs that are covered by a plan. And every plan has a different formulary. They're commercially, um, commercially available vaccines and injections that are not covered by Part B are included in Part D. A common one is the shingles shot. Shingrix is a Medicare Part D injection. Part D premium penalties for late enrollment will occur unless you have qualified for a special enrollment period. We'll wait for the next slide. Medigap insurance, also known as Medicare, uh, Medicare supplement insurance, kind of supports Medicare, original Medicare A and B, helps you pay for some of the costs not paid for by Medicare A and B, like the deductibles for A, B, and the 20% coinsurance. There are 10 plans that are standardized by the federal government and state laws. The premiums and cost sharing for each of these plans vary and are subject to annual rate increases. Additional benefits like prescription drug coverage, dental coverage, vision, hearing, anything additional has to be purchased separately at an additional premium when you go this route. A lot of people refer to this, to this route as the silo approach to healthcare, where you're kind of buying customiz customized different portions of your healthcare. Um, at different premiums, and you would carry a different card for each one of these services. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Important things to know about Medicare supplement plans are that you must be enrolled in Medicare Part A and Part B 
and live in the state where the plan is offered. There is no underwriting for Medicare supplement plans in the first six months after enrolling in Part D at age 65 or after. They do offer nationwide coverage and it says no provider network, but the caveat is as long as the provider or facility accepts original Medicare. And Medicare supplement plans do exactly what they say they do. They supplement original Medicare. So if Medicare pays for the service, the supplemental plan will pay that remaining portion. Go to the next slide. Medicare costs. You're always going to have out-of-pocket costs when it comes to Medicare. In other words, a certain dollar amount that you are responsible for out-of-pocket. The first one might be a premium. This is a fixed amount of what you pay for coverage, usually on a monthly basis. Your Medicare Part B definitely has a monthly premium. A deductible, these are set amounts that you would pay for covered services before your plan begins to pay. A copay is a fixed amount that you pay at the time that you receive a covered service. And then you might have coinsurance. This is an amount that you pay when the plan splits the cost for covered services with you by a percentage. For example, Medicare Part B has an 80-20 cost split. That's known as, co as coinsurance. Go to the next slide. So Medicare Advantage Part D and Medigap costs. Uh, plans will vary in cost depending on what you choose um, and, and what you include. So costs that you could pay for Medicare Advantage plans might not be a premium. You might have a zero premium for that Medicare Advantage plan, but you also might have deductibles, you will definitely have co-pays, and you might have co-insurance depending on the service. Prescription drug plans will have all of these. They'll have a monthly premium, a deductible that you have to meet, co-pays that you would have, and then co-insurance for more expensive tier five prescription drugs. And then Medicare supplement plans, you will have a monthly premium, you might have deductibles, and you might have co-pays depending on which one of the 10 plans that you choose. So let's go on to the next slide. Oh, one important note there at the bottom that it brought up is that Medicare Advantage plans do all come with a safety net known as a maximum out of pocket that tells you if you go over a certain dollar amount, you'll be done spending for the rest of the year. So Medigap or Medicare Advantage, how do you choose? Um, as, as you can imagine, it's quite confusing. We've already gone over a lot of information and when you first qualify for Medicare, it can be overwhelming. So there are some considerations that you wanna take into account. You wanna look at the coverage, you wanna look at the cost, and you wanna look at the convenience. So let's look at Medigap plans or Medicare supplement plans. As far as coverage is concerned, it pays some costs not paid by original Medicare. It doesn't help with prescription drug costs. You buy that plan separately. You do get nationwide access to Medicare participating providers. And some of these plans may offer additional value added services like discounts for vision or discounts for dental services. The cost associated with Medigap plans would be a monthly premium, a Part D plan premium should you choose to enroll in a prescription drug plan, and any out-of-pocket costs that depend on the plan that you choose. The convenience associated with a Medigap or Medicare supplement plan is that uh, you, you're going to have multiple plans, you're going to have multiple cards, and you're going to be paying multiple premiums. So again, you'll have your Medicare, your Medigap plan, your prescription Part D, and then many people will add a dental plan and a vision plan. So now let's look at Medicare Advantage plans and talk about what the coverage does there. So for coverage under Medicare Advantage plans, you have to have all the benefits associated with original Medicare by law. These often include Part D prescription drug coverage. They may have provider networks. It's important to understand that not all networks are the same with Medicare Advantage plans. On a Medicare HM plan, excuse me, a Medicare Advantage HMO, you will have networks where you will get referrals to see specialists. Um, but in turn, the specialists communicate back with your primary care physician, and this provides you with what's known as a continuity of care model for your healthcare. You may also get additional benefits. The cost associated with Medicare Advantage plans might be a zero monthly premium to a small monthly premium. 
it usually will include your Part D plan premium. So you're not gonna pay anything extra for that. You might have co-pays for services that are rendered or co-insurance for things like durable medical equipment. Um, and there will be a maximum out of pocket that kind of serves as a safety net for you. But if you have a catastrophic year, you know you will never go over a certain dollar amount. The convenience of these plans is that they're all in one plan. You have everything under one premium, if you are even paying a premium, and you carry one card. So let's go to the next slide. The financial assistance programs are available for people who need assistance for either their medical costs or their prescription drug coverage. So we'll wait for the screen to catch up with my mouth here. There's extra help with Medicare that'll help pay for prescription drug costs. Medicaid that will help pay for healthcare costs for people with low income and limited resources. And um, as Damian mentioned earlier, these programs vary by state. And then there's Medicare Savings Program. This helps Medicare beneficiaries pay for premiums associated with Part A if they don't qualify for a zero premium and Medicare Part B. Let's go to the next slide. Let's talk first about extra help with Medicare. This is a program for Medicare beneficiaries with low income. Your, your resources must be limited to $15,510 for an individual or $30,950 for a married couple living together. Um, your annual income must be limited to um, $20,385 for an individual or $27,465 for a married couple living together. Um, so they look at both resources, meaning your assets, and your income. For the application process, you can file an application for extra help with Medicare um, th through um, Social Security with form SSA 1020. You can apply online at ssa.gov backslash extra help. You can call Social Security and apply over the phone, or you can apply at any of your Social Security offices. Let's go to the next slide. So Medicaid is a state program that helps with the costs associated with medical services. It can help with premiums, annual deductibles, and co-pays. Um, program is, the program's for Colorado residents with low income. So um, recipients of Social Security income and temporary assistance to needy families automatically qualify for Colorado Health First. Um, childless, uh, childless adults between 19 and 64 can receive Health First Colorado if their incomes meet a certain threshold. After 65, most individuals will be eligible for Medicare as their primary insurance, so their Medicaid eligibility is a little bit different. The threshold goes up a little bit for income. Application process for qualifying for Medicaid is to call Health First Colorado or go to your county's human services department or these other two options that Damian mentioned earlier. You can see both of these um, presentations have been added to the chat room in terms of a PDF that you can print off and you will have all of this information at your fingertips. Let's go to the next slide. So the Medicare Savings Program helps people pay for premiums associated with Part A and Part B. There are four different types of Medicare savings programs that you may have heard referred to as Quimby, Slimby, Q1, and QDWI. Um, the most common are qualified Medicare beneficiaries and specified low-income Medicare beneficiaries. These two programs really give people um, the most financial support because obviously their incomes are lower. There are other programs for qualified disabled and working individuals um, that have a higher threshold for income and allow them to qualify. And the application process for this can be done at your local human services department in your county. So you would go to Adams County Human Services, Jeffco, Denver, Arapahoe County, et cetera. Let's go ahead, go to the next slide. So there's another option that people have that can help them with their finances on a Medicare plan. These are Medicare Advantage plans for people who qualify for both Medicare and Medicaid. They're called dual special needs plans. And when, when people um, take advantage of a dual special needs plans, 
not only does it improve their access to care because they now have private insurance, um, let's, let's explain that a little bit. When you have Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare is your primary and Medicaid is your secondary insurance. And so you're having to find doctors that will accept both of those assignments to get care. When a, when a member goes with a dual special needs Medicare Advantage plan, they are being insured by a Medicare insurance company like United Healthcare or Humana or Aetna or Kaiser. And in that respect, they are getting access to all of the doctors that participate with those companies in the area. So it improves your access to care. You get more benefits for healthy living. You get a zero copay for medications on many plans in, in, in some areas. You're getting transportation benefits, dental, vision. A lot of plans have healthy food benefits where you get a stipend every month to spend on healthy food or over-the-counter items. Many of these um, plans have programs that assist members with maintaining their Medicaid eligibility. Because once you turn 65, Medicaid is going to ask you to recertify quite often. It can be as often as three to four times a year. And these programs will help them requalify and stay eligible for a dual complete plan. You might also get benefits like hearing aids and gym membership. So if you know of people who have both Medicare and full Medicaid eligibility, this is a really important consideration. Let's go to the next slide, please. So Colorado actually has 109,000 dual eligible citizens. What that means is that we have 109,000 people who are both on Medicare and Medicaid. Go to the next slide. So it's important to know how to identify a dual special needs qualifying individual. Um, these are some important, these are some characteristics that um, we've identified with these um, individuals. 42% of them are disabled. 17% have Alzheimer's or related dementia. 12% are 85 or older. 45% have three or more chronic conditions, like maybe COPD, maybe um, diabetes. 34% um, have a mental illness and 27% use institutional um, care, okay, or, or a, a, an in-home equivalent of that type of care. 67% of those qualified are not enrolled in a dual special needs plan. And based on research that's been done by carriers in the area, it's because they don't know that they exist. Their incomes are generally very low, between $8,000 and $11,000 a year. And let's go on to the next slide. This slide right here just gives you an idea of what uh, somebody living on $1,000 a month might be experiencing. Um, I think we all know how expensive it is to live in Colorado right now. Um, and you can, you can see that, uh, you know, this rent that they're showing here for Colorado is a shared rent with, you know, one or two other people. But everything adds up to a point where people are under budgeted to the point of $82 a month, even if they're just living on the bare minimum. These dual complete plans that are available by various insurance companies help them bridge those gaps because they're getting assistance for over-the-counter items and for food. Um, many of them, as I said, have a zero copay for prescription drugs, which can help them out quite a bit. Um, I'm not gonna go item by item through this, but you can see that People who are on low income are, are having a hard time making ends meet here in, in our great state of Colorado. Let's go to the next slide. So if you do know of anybody or if you yourself are, are somebody who needs some assistance with Medicare and Medicaid, you can call me at any time. My phone number is available to you in the chat, my email, and we're gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions that you might have. Connie, uh, this was one. Um, what is the impact of not having underwriting for the first six months of Medicare supplement plans? And what does that That's mean for the question. consumers? That's a really good question. So Medicare supplement plans give you um, a, a guarantee issue is what they call it when you first turn 65. It lasts for the first six months of your eligibility. And um, if, should you decide not to enroll in a Medicare supplement plan at that time, maybe you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, maybe you just go with original Medicare, after that six-month period goes by, 
if you wanted to get into a Medicare supplement plan, you would be going through underwriting. That The significance of that, Damien, varies by company. Some plans have very lenient underwriting processes where others might have more stringent. But it could result in you not being accepted into a Medicare supplement plan or paying a higher premium for that Medicare supplement plan. Okay. Thank you, Connie. That we had one more course. about long-term home health, how to access it. Um, to be eligible for Medicaid long-term health care, HCBS benefits, an applicant must be over age 65, blind or disabled, and must also require a nursing home level of care. The applicant must be assessed functionally, that's that functional assessment by Colorado HICPUF Healthcare Policy and Finance single entry points. And I just put um, those single entry points. There's every county has one and then Denver shares and um, Rocky Mountain Human Services for Denver Metro and then Jeffco is in the Denver Metro. TRE is in the Springs. Those are those single entry points.